Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today, I would like to tell you about the first step towards algebra in geometry. So algebraic geometry is this whole idea of, well, kind of having some geometric picture in mind and pushing it towards algebra. Okay, so you kind of want to, ge geometry is nice, beautiful, everyone likes geometry. Probably not everyone likes geometry, but if you're watching this video, I would make a guess that you like geometry. So let's say everyone likes geometry, um, but geometry is difficult sometimes. I will show you a three-dimensional plot. It's, it's a bit difficult, and then for higher dimensions, by in different fields or something, ugh, it gets a bit nasty. Um, but algebra is somewhat easy. So if you can put, or kind of, kind of push, uh, well, geometry into algebra, that would be excellent. And that's kind of the whole slogan of algebraic geometry in the end. So we get there very, very slowly. We make kind of step by step, kind of pushing algebra, sorry, geometry into algebra, translating geometry into algebra. And eventually, uh, kind of there, there will be this step where you should have a geometric picture in mind, kind of in the back of your head, but it somehow will vanish in the algebra that we do. And whatever algebra means, so eventually it will mean some kind of category theory or something. And that might be one of the reasons why it is so difficult nowadays to learn algebraic geometry. Because depending on what kind of way where the lecture starts or the lecturer starts, where the book starts, you're looking at, maybe it's actually not apparent anymore why it's called geometry. Maybe you're just doing some abstract algebra or something. Um, and that's why I will spend hopefully a lot of time just having some pictures in mind. And yeah, we'll see what comes out and I hope you will enjoy it. So, well, the first step towards algebra and geometry is what is called an ideal. And we'll just, we'll just, I will just explain what it is and where it comes from. But it really the slogan is enter algebra, enter algebra into geometry. Okay. So um, remember that our, well, uh, well, the variety operation takes some input, like some, some polynomials. And these are with all the points that are kind of where the polynomials vanish. And the first thing we observe is a little bit of a kind of confusing point, um, but it's kind of really easy to explain. So confusing the first time, but then actually it's pretty clear, namely that the, the smaller P gets, the bigger V gets. So the fewer polynomials you have, the larger your geometric object is. P are the polynomials, the algebraic objects, and V is the geometric object, the variety. And this doesn't make sense because a variety are all points that vanish on the piece, right? On the polynomials. The fewer polynomials you have, the easier it is to vanish on all of them. So it gets bigger. Um, and here's an example. It's kind of really, really nice. So let's just say our variety is, we have two varieties here, uh, a G and an F and a G. And that's some kind of uh, ellipse and some kind of hyperbola or whatever. And then the variety where you want to vanish on both right, on both F and G, it's actually pretty tiny. It's almost not visible. It's just the four intersection points here that are marked in red. It's quite tiny, the four intersection points. While the variety where you want to vanish on F times G is large, it's both. So here are a few rules. Um, uh, that's what it is. So let's just think about it. If you want to vanish on F and G, well, these are going to be the points in the intersection. If you want to vanish on F times G, well, you can either vanish on F or on G. So this will be kind of the union operation. And you can already see this fun, fun property that people usually call some version of contravariant. And this is really where it comes from, some contravariance. Whatever that means, it really means um, here, if something gets smaller inside, the outside gets bigger. And if something gets bigger inside, the outside gets smaller. And that's really what it is. But it's already a good a good start for us because it's an algebraic operation on the varieties. It kind of makes sense, right? So, so if you um, make the polynomials you want to vanish on bigger, you usually take an intersection. And if you want to make them kind of smaller by, by taking a product, uh, you just take the union. So product makes them smaller. It's a bit confusing, but um, because it can be a root of F or of G, because you take the product, if F vanishes, then F times G vanishes. So it actually gets uh, gets bigger. I hope that's reasonably clear. We're trying to look for algebraic operations on our favorite set, uh, the variety operation. And here comes kind of the catch or kind of the, the bait, if you want. The catch comes later, <laughs> way later. Uh, the, the bait is, uh, let's say we have some variety, huh? something like that. And th this is my set X. So F vanishes on X. So this is my variety here. 
So if f vanishes on x, then so does h times f for any h, for any polynomial h. Simply because, well, if, if, it, if you have a product of two polynomials, yeah, a product of two polynomials, and you vanish on one of them, so you're a zero of one of them, then you're a zero on the other one. So here's a product of two polynomials. So this polynomial, let's say this is f, a very boring polynomial, and let's say this one is h, uh, x minus 2, this one is h, then 1 is a root of f, but 1 is also a root of f times h. That's essentially it. And you can see that here. So um, the h times f always gets bigger. So the original set will vanish on it. And this just really means that if you have the variety generated by f and the variety generated by f and h of f, nothing will really change. So you can always add in multiples of f. And your algebraic object, sorry, your geometric object is still the same. And that's kind of first remarkable property. So you can always add multiples of things you already have because of this kind of easy uh, property that if you're a root of the blue part, sorry, if you're a root of the red part, then you're also a root of the product of the red and the blue part. Pretty simple. I hope that's reasonably clear. So really, um, so this notation just means the ideal spent by, I'll come back to that in a, in a, in a second. But essentially what happens here is that the, the variety you get from a set of polynomials is the same as the variety you get from the ideal generated by those polynomials. Uh, yeah, and addition is a bit of a weird operation, so I need to address that one as well, but it works as well. So let me just, before uh, going to the picture, state what we will see. So if you have the variety of f and g, then it's equivalent to just adding f plus g. Uh, so again, the variety doesn't see the difference between a, a set and an ideal. That's kind of the point. So if g and f vanish on, on x, then so does f plus g. Again, for the very simple reason, if uh, x minus 1, whatever squared, that's f, and g is x minus 1 cubed, so both vanish on, on minus 1, so there's some vanishes on minus 1, right? Kind of easy, kind of easy to imagine. Um, in the pictures, it's a bit, a bit difficult because of this contravariance property, so it actually gets much, much smaller. But here's a cool picture. So if uh, so, f is say the blue one, so f is the blue one, uh, g is the red one. Okay. So f comma g, as I said, is intersection. A little bit difficult to see in this picture, but f comma g is intersection of those points. So the variety is defined by f comma g is those four points. But f plus g, just in this case, I really did the calculation with uh, Mathematica um, using a contour plot. You can do that with any software that can do some, some kind of level set plot, some kind of implicit contour plot. Anyway, f plus g in this case are those two lines. And by magic, if you just intersect the whole pictures, then they still intersect in the same points. Right? So all this thing is just the same as this one here. But this is clear. So you have f and g, they intersect in four points in this case. You add f plus g, which is a very different beast, like two lines instead of an ellipse and a hyperbola, a very different beast, but they still inter intersect in the same points. And that's kind of fascinating. Yeah? So you take both together and you get this fascinating observation that the variety kind of can't see the difference between the set and the ideal it generates. So ideal it generates really just means you can take sums of elements and you can multiply with polynomials that are not, so that the h's, right? So here, keep in mind, f vanishes on, so that's the internal operation. Here I have f and g vanish on, and then we get this one is inside, but here h is pretty arbitrary, so multiplication is a bit better here. Anyway, so this really means the following. Kind of the idea that there's an inverse operation to our um, algebraic construction, sorry, to our geometric construction, and it's called the ideal of, of, of a set. Okay, the ideal of a set are really just all polynomials that vanish on that set. Huh? Ideal of a set, all polynomials that vanish on that set. Exactly the opposite type of thing as our V, which are all points that vanish on our given polynomials. Now we do the opposite all polynomials that vanish on their set. Um, so it's a collection of points. And the idea is that this I operation, so we have I and V, one of the main players in classical algebraic geometry, I and V, they're essentially inverses to one another. So you can push problems from 
geometry to algebra and you can push problems from algebra to geometry. So what I wrote here is not quite true. I will correct it and give you the correct statement in the next video. But it's like morally true, so it's kind of true enough for me to put it on a slide. They're inverse operations in some very nice sense. And this is really this idea, the main key idea of algebraic geometry that will kind of be with us for the rest of, of this of algebraic geometry is that some geometric object is the same as some algebraic object. In this case, varieties are essentially the same as ideals in polynomial rings. And then you can study ideals in polynomial rings. And you can really just every, because it's kind of an inverse, yeah, it's not quite an inverse. I will correct that, as I said in the next video, but it's a kind of an inverse operation going to between V and I. You can see geometric things in algebra and you can see algebraic facts in geometry. So here's one of my favorites and it, it, it's a bit difficult to illustrate. So you need to go to three dimensions to have a nice picture. But anyway, so you can do something that's following. So you have a green variety, that's the F1. A red variety that's a g1 and remember that f comma g is the intersection and that's the blue one here uh on on the the slide okay so the blue one is intersection but now something funny happens so you can actually generate this guy here using different so this could be v f prime g prime different polynomials already so an ideal can have different generators that's the algebraic notion and you can see that in the geometry because on the on the left hand side, my f and g are different from the f and g I've chosen on the right hand side, right? They're clearly different surfaces, but they intersect in the same thing. They intersect in the blue thing. Well, so this is an illustration, hopefully reasonably okay to, to, to visualize, that if you vary the generators of the ideal, you get very different pictures in geometry, like very different kind of uh, surfaces, but they seem they, they still intersect in the same thing. So varying generators of the ideal, putting in different generators. Intersect, still, in, still intersect in the same thing in this case. And this kind of this correspondence between, well, maybe it's kind of easier to work on ideals to just um, kind of think abstractly what is, a, what is a generator in an ideal or something like that, instead of just looking at, staring at pictures all of the time. Again, I encourage you to keep the, keep the geometry in mind. That's the whole point why I made this, this video series. I want to keep the geometry in mind. Because the main idea of algebraic geometry is that maybe, maybe algebra is actually easier than geometry itself. It's just algebra motivated by geometry. And this I and V construction is kind of the first glimpse of that, kind of this inverses going from variety to ideals. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.